Welcome to, I think this is the last series of the live for um, Hispanic Heritage Month. We are talking all about Latino spirit, or the Latino Taino <laughs> spirituality. Um, so say hello when you come through. Um, let me see what, I, what else I had to say. So yeah, we're chatting with... Elba from Taino Library and Lisa from Nikini Inaru. So I'm just waiting for them to jump on. Um, so definitely bring your questions. Stay a while. I've got um, I've got my appropriate attire for today because I got my not today colonizer shirt and my Taino sun slash um flower there's like a flower in there i don't want to say sunflower because that's obviously a different flower <sighs> but say hello how is everybody's day that's like my favorite saying that i have from my son how was everybody's day oh my goodness oh my goodness all right and if you have um, your questions already, you ready to go, just start typing them in the chat here while we wait for them to join us. So. I think this is the last one in the series. Um, I really hate that I can't play music because I really like to vibe to music and I hate that I can't play music as I wait, you know, for the live to kind of um, jump off because it's really annoying. I feel like it's an awkward silence. But Instagram shuts me down when I try to play music on lives, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, I know I got my questions ready. So. Oh, I see Elba's on. I'm like, I hate the awkward. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see. And a doo -doo. Are you here? Oh, here we go. Hey, all right. Here. Hey. How are are you? Oh, I can't hear. It. Hold on. My um my volume's up, but I can't hear you. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, you can hear me now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Instagram was doing all kinds of pop-ups cuz this is a I, I've never gone live on this phone before. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so you got to do all the how your microphone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. Let's see. I see. And even on my end, I feel like Instagram's being weird. I had to invite you like three times. Yeah, I saw you and I'm like, Coño, but on my side, it didn't like, there was nothing. I'm like, okay, do I need to go live on my own and then leave? How does this? <laughs> there we go. Okay. 
Yay! We've got hey. Yay! Hello, hello, hello. I'm so excited to have hello. you. Hello. I'm going to do a better angle. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing my... filters. Nice. Okay. Filters. Filters. Oh, oh. You're ahead of you. See, I don't even know what filters to use. I'll probably end up doing something right. crazy. Right, me too. I don't even try touching it. I'm like, <laughs> before I mess something up. Um, I don't even, but I do have my not today colonizer shirt. Nice. I, I really love it. it. I'm really excited about today's um topic because I feel like we don't talk enough about. And even during Hispanic Heritage Month, I still feel like we should be doubling down on our Afro-Indigenous ancestors, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so before we start, I'd love to get for you guys to introduce yourselves and like the roles that you hold in your communities. Who's going first? <laughs> I was like, who wants to go first? I mean, I guess I'll go first, Miati. My name is Enba. Um, I pretty much own and operate Taino Library. Um, I'm a enrolled member and Tukuda of Higuayagua Taino Caribeña. And um that's that, that's pretty much all I got for right now. Uh, all yeah. Other questions. <laughs> <laughs> and of course I'm Nikki Ni Inaru. Um I am a part of our uh, Taino voting gang, um, Yucayeque here in Vieques. I'm a Taquina, which is a teacher and educator, so to speak. Um, so educator, spiritualist, a little bit of everything. But I mean, yeah, that's the same. That's what I have until people ask questions. Okay. Well, you already know I have questions. <laughs> Down because the way that I'm set up, I feel like I'd remember everything and then I'll remember nothing. So I have my question <laughs> set up. So the first one I have is, what is a reconnecting Taino? Oh, I'm gonna let Elsa <laughs> handle that because she's good with that one. So um, I would say a reconnecting Taino is a person who has, you know, Taino ancestry. Um, and they are actively connecting with members of the community, with their homeland, whichever um, island it is that they um, that their ancestors, you know, were mostly in. Because a lot of us have ancestors that were in different parts of the Caribbean and all that good stuff. But um, I would say the operative word is actively connecting. You know, because there's people that you know um, maybe doing like genealogy research and uh and like like reading books and stuff like that but i would consider someone reconnecting somebody who is participating in like community events and going to like yeah powwows and aretos and all that good stuff okay How did you want to ask me Kimi? so actively connecting in community because you to a sense that's what the reconnection is all about. You can read and you can um, do your research, but if you are not actively looking for your community and reconnecting within community, then all you're really doing is just basic education. Um, And a lot of the things that you learn within the community are priceless. You don't get it just from reading books. I mean, we know how it is, especially with our stories, our Taino stories. A lot of them are very choppy. We're still putting all of that stuff together. So I agree with Elba. A lot of it has to do with getting into an active community and playing your role within, your, within that active community. I don't know, I feel like a lot of our um, ancestors, for those of us who do identify as Caribe, Taino, it is very much storytelling, right? We have that, our culture is storytelling. And so um, it's, uh, it's only natural that this applies also in this way, right? 
Because, yeah, you can read so many books, but if you're not actively participating, it just, you're missing a piece, right? That's like reading about God, but like not going to church kind of thing, right? So like, speaking of, is Taino spirituality like a closed practice? That's another question I had. <laughs> Go, Elba. You go first. I see your face. <laughs> go first. He said we have to talk about it. Let's talk about I, I, it. Yeah, for sure. Um, when it comes to to interacting with certain entities, everything, like, you want guidance. You don't want to just, like, I don't know, go in there unprotected, not knowing what you're doing, not knowing what to expect, all of that kind of stuff, you know, um, uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to find the words that are nice. <laughs> you, you, you want to help me here, sis? <laughs> I'm gonna say it like this: If you are not Taino, you have no business even getting involved into the spirituality and and getting into any of our um, practices because this. Pra- these practices are definitely ancestral and they're very, very, very specific. Um, I'm going to play off of what Elba said. Um, you do not, the, these, this is not like Epiritismo. This is not like, you know, 21 divisions that, you know, you get to work with, with different little things. No, this is not like that. This is very, Very much so, you have to have the lineage in order to learn and in order to connect with those entities. So in that sense, absolutely, it is it is closed because it is closed to our people. Um, And it sounds horrible, but I mean, when you think about it in a logical sense, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. How are you going to connect to to ancestral spirits if your ancestors aren't connected to those ancestral spirits? Right. Exactly. Right. And what I've noticed too is that folks are lacking a little bit of reverence and respect um, because, you know, definitely we, we all trying to get into ancestor work and we all want to reconnect but then there's a respectful way to do that and what i've noticed is like people copying the face paint or like people you know in order to reconnect but to me it seems like cosplay because if i dress up like a priest it doesn't make me one right (laughs) if i wear white it doesn't make me a santera and so people it's almost like want to reconnect and like and i and i'm seeing that like our you know, our, our, our Caribeños are trying to connect, but it's almost like they don't know how. And so they don't, they just kind of are cosplaying through it sometimes. And that's kind of why I wanted you both on, right? So like to explain these things to, so that people understand, hey, there's still a respect and there's still a reverence. This is still an ancestral practice, right? But it should be approached in that way, in a respectful way. So I have to put my two cents into this one. Yeah. I I think the most, I think the most damaging part of this aspect is that that when people like Elba and I tell others, listen, there's a respect level that you need to have because you don't know what any of this means. A lot of our people that want to connect they get really offended by that and then it turns into almost an angry level where we Mm -hmm. are not not telling them we're telling you learn about this first you're entitled to it it's part of your lineage learn about this first before you do it and that's where the disconnect comes from. I don't think it really is that people are not trying to connect. It's just that they get angry when they get called out, even in a respectful manner, because we've had instances, Elba, where we tell people in a respectful manner, 
you don't know what this means. So just refrain from doing that and learn a little bit more. And then you'll see why we're saying what we're saying. And it, it they get angry. <laughs> it's because like they, it, there's a certain vulnerability in not knowing something. So I think that's when people get defensive. It's like, oh, you figured out that I don't know what I'm doing or what I'm talking about or da 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 da. And it's like, we're not trying to be assholes when we point it out. We're just saying, hey, for your own protection, for your own well being, you know, because even there's even things that you can read in a book, right? Like you can read all about what an areto is in a book or listen to someone talk about it on, on a But until you go into an areto, you don't have that full, complete understanding because you don't have that lived experience. Kind of like when you're a kid and your parents are telling you certain things and you're like, I know, I know, and you think you know it all and it isn't until you're an adult that you're like, oh, shit, that's what they meant. That There's so much more that I didn't realize was going on. That's exactly the way it is when it comes to spirituality and people want to be like, like, oh, I've been doing this or whatever for however many years. But it's like, there are certain things that like, if, for example, if you're talking about an ancestor altar and I look at your ancestor altar because you, first of all, made the mistake of putting it on the internet for people to see, um, you know, there are certain placements of things, I'm sure from any practice, if it's not in a certain place or what have you, you know, somebody don't know what they're doing. So it's one of those things where it's like, you you have to be vulnerable in and just saying I don't I don't know shit I don't know like and that's scary because when you're looking for guidance there's a lot of charlatans out here there's people to sabe aprovechándose de la right. gente so you know you have to really that's why being in community is so important because exactly. you know who you know who's gonna be able to help guide you and stuff like that and. And I don't mean being in community for like a year, although at least a year. But, you know, sometimes you don't really get to know people until a couple years later. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you don't get to know them at all until some crazy shit comes up on the internet. But all. Let me shut up. <laughs> Did you no, and I, I feel like, dude, it's a process of decolonizing, right? It's, because a, it's I a total process of decolonizing. I grew up That is her, the whole entire point. Exactly. And I see it, I see the similarities, right? Where when you decide to visit a church, you're not going to be going in there telling the pastor up, but you're doing everything wrong, right? Because you know, like I'm saying, or whatever. And so it's seeing him as the elder of the church where, where you're going. It's kind of, to me, it's the same, the same respect should be applied. Like, hey, if an elder in a community is saying, maybe you want to, make a change, right? Like maybe you want to do this a little bit differently. Maybe you're doing this incorrectly and not mm -hmm. to get upset because to me it's the same as it, or like to disrespect the pastor and be like, what yo lo hago así? La Biblia no dice eso porque yo leí la, la Biblia and it says something else. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's the disrespect a little bit because it's like, no, well, I'm entitled and sure you are, but then at the same time be open to learning because there are, you know, <laughs> there are people that have been doing this for a very long time. And so being open to learning and understanding that you don't know it all. But I, I feel like somebody reads a book and then they run online and they want to, yeah. you know, pretend that they, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> I get frustrated because it's like, come on. Someone has a question. I feel like, oh, sorry. No, that's okay. I just thought this question is a good one what do y'all suggest if you don't live in an area and they live in oregon where i haven't yet found the final community to reconnect with i connect with people online but i'm taking things slow to feel welcome so any yes we have to unlearn to learn but any any advice there and i know i'm far from new york city and so i have the same issue I don't have a, a close, I'd have to drive like four hours just to, to be in community, which is, a, which would be a little tough for me. So. Elba, you get that one because I'm isolated on an island. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Well, for me, it, and, and here, this actually goes to show because Elba is in a completely different Yucayeke than I am, but mm-hmm. we still remain in community together. Mm-hmm. So that in itself goes to show that it's not even just about that. Um, but I know that her Yucayeke is more open and has more sections and pockets of people in different areas Whereas ours here, it's very concentrated here because this is where we're at. So you, you go, and the motherland. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You are. <laughs> yeah. So you can handle that, that one, <laughs> that end, because, yeah, I don't have anything to offer in that. <laughs> we do have people. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say we do have members in New York and we do have members that have come from different states to Vieques and we remain in community with them because of the online, you know. Um, But like I said, it's we're more isolated, whereas Higuayagua has different sections. All right, I'll be quiet. Elba, you go. (laughs) Take that. (laughs) Well, the... (laughs) It's a blessing and a curse, right? Because you get to connect with everybody and you get to connect with everybody. Right. So, um, when it comes to, uh, for example, I can really only speak to Higuayagua, right? Um, although everything I say is my own opinion. But um, when it comes to connecting, right, if you're part of the diaspora online, like I said, can be a blessing in, um, you know, going like, for example, Facebook. I know that uh, I feel like more people are on Facebook, particularly like elders and stuff like that, who you may want to um, connect with. Um, There's a lot more, what I would say, variety when it comes to different people, different Yucayekeno um, and their like um, way of honoring the ancestors and uh, all that stuff, depending on their location and what have you, because the all right, we all got separated all over the place and had to learn different things according to the land we're on. So um, there's really there's really that, and um, you can use the internet as well to find out about physical events, you know, workshops, indigenous workshops, indigenous um, you know events like powwows and stuff like that. Uh, even though, you know, Taino do areto, plenty of Taino go to their areas, powwows or certain locations, for example, like in New York, in Massachusetts and stuff like that, where you're going to see a lot more powwow activity. Because um, I know, like, for example, when I lived in Brunswick, Georgia, there really wasn't anything in that area except for driving, you know, two, four, however many hours away. And sometimes that's that's just something that you have to do, like if you're going to pursue, for example, initiation into an ATR, you know, there's a certain amount of money and certain things that you would have to be ready and prepared to um, to save and what have you to, you know, progress on that journey of, of connecting to that particular spirituality. And, and people travel. Different. So I just want to say people travel for that. People mm-hmm. travel for, for ATRs. I know mm-hmm. plenty of people where their ILES are in California, but they're in Florida. Or their ILES <laughs> are in New York, and they're all the way in, in, in Puerto Rico. So it, you, right. you can basically even join a Yucayeke and Boring Gang, but just know, like Elba said, you're, you will have to invest into your own, you know, education basically exactly you know if you've got to travel for many times a year or go to a workshop or whatever if if workshops aren't done online because i know we were talking in another live about the tech taino techno taino techno taino oh my god (laughs) so we have so (laughs) here we have it coined techno taino um and no it's not mm, 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 no it's (laughs) It's it's technology Taino. So a lot of our our classes, what we end up doing is we put them on a barcode so that people can barcode them and then read and go through it. What we're trying to end up doing is doing more of a video form so that when we have our classes, um, 
you know, our active members who aren't here, they can actually see everything that's going on when, when we're doing it. So, yeah, techno thainos. We're technology thainos. <laughs> Now, someone said, what is an ATR? That's an African traditional religion. Are you, I'm still see you. Oh, and someone answered. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. I know. And someone said the elders near me are on Facebook mostly too. Yeah. I feel like that's so. What- I, <laughs> I was going to say that. So Facebook, no matter how much we hate it. <laughs> A lot of the elders love Facebook and a lot of the elders are on Facebook groups. They, I, I'm even my own Yukayeke. I had to guide my cacique to put and make a, a Instagram because it's like we're expanding, but a lot of it is Facebook groups. There's a lot of us that have groups and we're all the Yukayeke. You know that work together in community. A lot of us are in each other's groups. So we're learning this little bits and pieces from each other, actually. Um, but Facebook is it. Mm-hmm. Like all of our groups are on Facebook. So if you don't have Facebook, because that's the main connection right there. And I follow, I, I can't remember what. I know his first name, Miguel, but I always forget his last name. Is this Saye? Um, uh, right, yeah. So he's, I follow him too. I like to see his, mm-hmm. um, his mm-hmm. posts as well on Facebook. So definitely you find the elders. He's still really far from me, but I'm like one day when it's nice weather, because the weather here be tripping. So it's hard to do anything in the winter. Or in the fall, even. Um, okay. Yeah. What are the big? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. In the north. <laughs> no. <laughs> Where are Can't you? Can't pay me enough money to go back to New York City. Mm-mm. Oh. Mm-mm. This is rough. We're already in the fifties, low fifties. So I can't. And it's mid October. Like. Mm-mm. Yeah. It's 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 rough. I think we're going to have a rough winter on Mare, but it's hopefully not. Yeah. But yeah, that's 50 something? No. Yeah, you can't leave the house without a hoodie on at least un jacket, minimum. So, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, no. <laughs> no, thank I, you. My cousin's <laughs> my cousin I mean, chunk, in chunk chunk December. Has all year yeah. round. No. <laughs> Mm-mm. I was gonna say my cousins in the yard in December used to be like, I know that I that free, and I'm like, how cold is it? They'd be like, 70 degrees. This is too cold. I'm like, shut up. I wish it was 70. Wish it was 70 degrees. Oh my gosh. Um so I have my next question here. Uh, what are the biggest misconceptions that you hear online talking about online around the Taino, around Taino spirituality? That it yep. doesn't exist. Ooh. <laughs> that you can do Just whatever you want. You can mix that things. And la cosa. It's fine. Because because nothing, there's no sense of it anymore. So, inventa la cosa. Si que. That. <laughs> or, 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 okay, I'm going to say this. I know a lot of us here are in ATRs, 21 Divisions, uh, Epiritita, I'm going to say it that just because you practice those practices and you work with Indios that you're practicing Taino spirituality. That is the biggest, biggest, biggest pet peeve ever because people feel entitled with that one alone. Just because I practice these other things and they work with Indios, Mm -hmm. I am practicing Taino spirituality and that is false. And I, I always yeah. Indio. They're Indio de Puerto Lao. It could be Indios from not even the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Caribbean indigenous people. So like oof. <laughs> like oof. I know. Well and and the and and let's just say for what it is. Taino spirituality is more based on on semiism. 
Yeah. It's not really based on working <laughs> with the Indios to say, you know, como quien dice. It's more seminismo or just semiism on its own, which is a whole different practice altogether that people just don't, again, it's that it doesn't exist. Right. And that's because not many know exactly about it because, again, like Elba said and I said, it's a closed practice. And I feel like even in the 21, a lot of people, like, don't work with the Indios, the Indian division, right? And, I mean, they, they, it's mainly used for, like, healing and things like that. And so they're, sometimes I feel like they're almost, um, like, forgotten a little bit in that way. So depending on the practitioner, obviously, but let me see. I think we, we had a question. Hold on. Where did I, I lost it. Where'd it go? It said, what do you recommend for us to do once we are done with enrollment spirituality wise? I don't even know how to take that question in. I, I don't either. I don't know what they mean by enrollment. Yeah. Spirituality. That's you don't, interesting phrasing. Yeah. You don't enroll spiritually only. And that's that. So being that, you know, I'm reconnecting to me. Elba, you can play off of this one. But to me, it's a whole identity. A lot mm. of us are practicing Tainos every single day because that is the identity. That's our identity. A lot of us also are, are practicing Tainos, but we're also, we also have our spirituality elsewhere because we are allowed to have our spirituality elsewhere. Most of us are in ATRs because naturally we're practicing our African spirituality and our Taino spirituality. We don't mix the two or the three or the four, whatever you're doing. Right. We don't mix it, but you don't necessarily enroll into Taino spirituality. You enroll into a Yukayeke and you live the life with the identity of being Taino. So I don't know if, if I don't know how, how, if you want to play on that one, Elba, mm -hmm. you can play on that one because that's how I feel. I agree. And I was looking at the comments and they clarified that they meant like after enrolling in the Yukayeke like how I'm assuming you would uh, further develop your spirituality. And that would, that would be, you know, it circles always back to community, right? So you're going to go to these events, you know, some of these events is just everybody selling things and buying cute stuff to wear um, at the next powwow and whatnot. And some of the stuff is actual like ceremonial events that either occur at the powwow or may occur in conjunction, like later on, all the Taino go over here and do their thing over here, depending on, you know, where you're at and all that good stuff. So um, it would be with a, um, with your community under the guidance of a Behike in which you would like further develop your connection with the ancestors um, through Taino spirituality. And um, what else? I feel like there was something else I was going to say. Acuerilo, so <laughs> there you go, guys. Yeah. Let's also highlight that it also depends on where you enroll, where you find community at. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Because some communities are more educational based, whereas some communities are more spiritual based. Um, I think it's also there's a level that's very personal because. Once again, it's an ancestral practice. So I like to see it very similar as our ATRs, that once we are initiated and it's, we don't go through an initiation process, we go through a ceremonial process, which is, which is different. Um, once you have your ceremony, it's almost like, like that's where you start tapping into your ancestral and since our stories are not 100% complete, and I, again, working off of Epiritismo and our Hispanic Caribbean practices, we allow our ancestors to guide us through. 
And I mean, for me, I've been a practicing epiritista for 25, 30 years. I'm initiated also in an ATR. My Taino spirituality actually came through those practices. I was led in the direction and you understand understand this, especially since you're a practitioner as well. When you tap in and you are in alignment with what it is that you're supposed to be doing, you, it, it just opens. Mm -hmm. The doors open. I literally didn't have to do much. I got messages and I followed those messages and everything just opened itself up on its own. And it continues even after I had my ceremonies, it continues to open its way, you know, to, to being a tequina and to learning more and to educating. And that's just, it's the, it's the whole flow of it. It's an ancestral practice. You have to allow your ancestors to come through and you have to allow them to guide you just like any other practice that you have. And even ancestrally, I feel like that's, they always gathered in community, right? Our Caribbean ancestors, always that was the thing, to gather in community and to spend time in community. And so obviously that has to be a big part of your practice as well. Even just thinking about it as honoring my ancestors in this way, right? By being in community. Because there's like so many ways to think about how to do the right thing, is what how I see it. But like definitely I'm that's how I'm seeing it as like, this is how my ancestors did it. I mean, I feel like even growing up, you know, our families would always get together. It's very similar. Somebody's birthday or somebody, we would all get together in community, right? And we would all buy food in community and we would do these things, you know, in community. I guess it murió. Let's pitch in, mm. in community. And I feel like that's the piece that it's almost like, that's the piece that we're not getting, but it's so ancestral. And it's almost like that's the tradition that we need to follow, right? Whether or not we're trying to reconnect, I just feel like community is a is a big a big thing. Um, Absolutely, and I think there's a difference too between like a personal your personal practice versus like your community practice as well. Because like Nikini was talking about earlier, the people who practice different things, but when it comes time to you know do the Taino thing. Everybody, you know, does it the Taino, the Taino way. You know what I mean? Right. Hey, uh, there's another question here. What, and it's not a dumb question. What are some of the things we can do day to day to begin aligning ourselves in preparation to begin learning and growing within our community? Follow Taino library. <laughs> <laughs> Small plug. No. <laughs> Right. People have a lot of resources. A lot of books. Taino Library is is free resource. Yeah. Free resource. Here on TikTok. Edu free educational resource on all of these subjects. That yes. is where you start. Yeah. And it is, someone said, I don't remember, um, it's mainly, and it continues after that. So I think with any spiritual practice, um, there it's lifelong, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just have one ceremony or even again, I take it back to church because that's what people are most familiar with and then they can connect the dots. But you go to church, you get baptized. That's in a sense a ceremony. That's in a sense an initiation. You don't just exit the church after that, right? You become a member of the church. You continue to come to service. And it's kind of the same thing where it's like you are a part of that community, in that way after, you know, so it always continues. Um, and I feel like for a lot of us, it is something to like decolonize through that to understand because a lot of the, the church has taken a lot of things from Afro-Indigenous people. So realizing that as we decolonize and we realize that and we're like, Hey, that, you know, there's a lot of similarities here. Right. Um, and realizing that so that you can move forward in your practice in that way. But it's definitely not going to be an overnight thing, especially if you're decolonizing. It's a form of resistance, too. I always say that. 
gathering mm-hmm. gathering in our ancestral and indigenous practices is a form of Ooh. resistance. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Because they will look at you and I will say it even here. And they're like, what are they doing? And we're like, we're doing it the indigenous way. Come and look at us and learn something. And it's, it's a form of activism in itself. Just, you know, the colonized activism resistance. It's, just, it's very similar to how our way of thinking in ATRs is. Mm-hmm. And there was a time where indigenous people couldn't even gather, right? They couldn't teach their dances to to the next generation that was illegal just like it was illegal at one point for puerto rico to display their flag like it's mm-hmm. you know we gotta also know the history and know the importance behind things before we just jump in right so i don't know if you wanted to say something in i was gonna say, say something but i i started listening to you guys and i totally <laughs> forgot it was, it was, it had to do with something you were saying. And I was like, Oh, I remember now. Um, it had to do with, with intuition, with, um, decolonizing and learning, or telling us and guiding us to where we need to go, who we need to be in community with, what practice to go into that will help us best, you know, honor them and better them, right. give them light or whatever it is that, that it is that they, that they want or need, you know, um, they will, they will guide you. You just kind of have to have faith, you know, mm-hmm. not in a Christian sense, but in the, just yeah. trust them to put you on the right path. Yes. And someone asked if this slide will be saved. I will save it to the highlights and it'll be on the reels as well. Um, hey. Hey. I, I do have another question. I don't know if anyone else has. I'm looking to see. No, nope. okay. Um, what is a remedy or advice that you've received from ancestral mothers? That's that's uh, one man. What what <laughs> happened? What advice did you not this. get from a mother? <laughs> I should have said the, the, that one to you before this. Because I feel like our mothers carry so much um, knowledge, right? From gender. And again, we're a storytelling um, community, right? And so, yeah, things might not be written down, but there are so many things that are passed down with from generation to generation. Like for me, it was like ginger. My mom always had ginger. That was something we always kept at home because in este frío, you get a cold ginger, right? But oh, also my mom as a birth worker and my grandmother, ginger to warm up the womb, right? So there was, it was like nothing else. The fridge could be empty, but we had ginger in the house, right? <laughs> ginger, I've always I think of when I think of my family specifically. So that's a hard one because I have so many. <laughs> so I come right. from a line of literal witches, I love- brujas. My mother, my grandmother on my mom's side, my grandmother on my dad's side, my great grandmother. Like I grew up in mm. this life, and they're so much like my dad I okay so okay so (laughs) wait so when I came to Puerto Rico the last time that I moved my dad was like slathering this stuff because he's ill and it was a whole ass bottle that looked like it was from like 1950 (laughs) of alcohol that my grandmother made and my grand- grandmother died in 2018. Oh, wow. He held, held on to that thing, boy. <laughs> well, he keeps filling. He fills it up. Mm. He keeps filling it up. So it's almost like the Mama Juana <laughs> bottle. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're, you're yeah. Dominican. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the Mama Juana bottle yeah. that you just keep, keep filling and it's keep rough. filling and keep filling. So, so it, you know, like, there's so many. My mother cured my... PCOS with Ruda con leche, and I was like, 
at the time, I was very young, but I had no idea that she was really teaching me something mm -hmm. that I would take on because I've you I've actually now in helping other people, I've actually given that remedy to people in order to limpiarse la matri. Um, the same same way my mother gave it to me when I was young. So there is I, I have POS. Ruda con, I've ru, never Ruda con leche. Ruda con leche. So, leche. And she's Dominican. So there you go with that one. She's Dominican. So any any kind of leche con fat will work. It has to have fat in it because the fat in the milk is what activates the ruda. Of course, and we know that the ruda for us is protection, but it's also medicine for us as well. So, I mean, I have stories and instances of things like this throughout my entire life. So it's, you know. I know, and Dominicans are famous for our botellas. Do Puerto Ricans do that too? Because I feel like that's a Taino thing. And we have a lot in common. Right? You would see all the botellas lined up in the kitchen, all for like different, you know. <laughs> all on different <laughs> top of the cabinets. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> for different things. Yeah. And only they knew what it was for. Like you couldn't touch their bottles. You were like, just ask me for what you want and I'll get it. Like, and I'll get it yeah. for you. I'll I'll give you what it is that you need. But right. esto no se toca. Right. Yeah, I think we all that. had that childhood. <laughs> <laughs> El, but what do you want to add? Because I I want to hear because you grew up in a family with a with a witchy family as well, right? Witchy family. Yeah. Bruja. Yeah. My 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 grandma on my mom's side and my great grandma on my dad's side. Now my great grandma, ella lo hizo todo bien escondido. Okay, like I had a reading, <laughs> I had a reading done by someone one time, and they were like, "Oh yeah, Espiritismo on your dad's side." And I was like, "No, no, no, on my mom's side." And later on, I ended up telling my mom about the reading, and she was like, "Tú sabes que tu abuela monía, she was an Espiritista too." And I was like, "What? No." You know, because even as an adult, I'm looking back and I'm like, where are the signs? There were no signs. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, she had an altar with the Virgin Mary and some of the stuff that she would do, you know, um, like boiling like bay leaves and cinnamon and stuff. And, you know, to like clear your passages, tirandole like dicks and you get a towel and you put your head over oh, it and a whole clear sinuses and shit. You know, doing stuff like that. So, like, with my mom's mom, I could look back and be like, oh, there's this and there's this and there's this. Oh, she was practicing Espiritismo. Oh, she might have had certain spirits. I don't know which ones. Um, but with my great-grandma, I don't know nothing. You know, there was just how, how you lived, I guess, that you, it, it was, was so stuff. Like, there's no, like, oh, she had this huge altar, obviamente, you know? Yeah, it was the the time I know and my husband's Puerto Rican so it's interesting to see that I love seeing how like connected we are in that way like through the through the Afro-Indigenous piece because I'm like I see it like we have very similar you know practices very similar music very similar food but even just like the way historically that we've done things right like it's all like his family too was a spirit does. And so hearing how they did things, I'm like, that's very similar to how my family did. And you know, you're, you're across the way, but so close that it's like so many, so many similarities. So, and see, yeah. someone asked, what books, literature, creation stories, lectures should I begin to start looking into for decolonization and stepping into an indigenous mindset? Ooh. Elba. <laughs> I mean, we we got a good bit of books in there. Um, there's some basic ones like um, what is it? The indigenous history of the United States, a queer history of the United States, an African history of the United States. I think it's African and Latino actually together in one book. And there's also an Afro indigenous history of the United States in there. Um, there's a couple of like 
really popular ones um, among like northern native communities that have been recommended, like um, all the real Indians died off, bad Indians. Um, there's 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 a bunch. Some of them are spiritual spirituality related. Some of them are more like community related and go into like gender roles and and stuff like that. Um, so so yeah, I tried to compile as many like books and articles and stuff like that. Um, obviously specifically with regard to the Caribbean, but also some of our things that some of our relatives um, recommended because you know, they're arguably, they lost less of their culture. So we have more about indigeneity that we can learn from them. Right. And even, um, I like to look in history too. I don't know if you, you recommend, uh, uh, what's the Bartolome de las Casas and the notes from the yeah. friar. I can't remember the full, it's a short read or is it a short destruction of the Indies or something like that? Yeah, it was a short read. There's two, there's two little ones. There's um the a brief account of the destruction that, of the Indies, the one talking about Bartolomeu, and then there's account of the antiquities of the Indians by Frank Ramon Pane, and they're both basically friars that were in the Caribbean had primary their their primary resources because they had direct contact mm -hmm. with our ancestors and. Um, you know, great assault because there's definitely a colonial religious perspective with the things that they write and how they write it. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're reading it. But there's a lot of a lot that they um, particularly Fane had compiled. Um, yes. In, in his, I mean, it's not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but considering that we're extinct, that's a lot to have written down. Right. And I think that's a good, for me, like I said, I grew up in the church. My family's still in church. And so that was a way for me to decolonize my spirituality in that way. Because then I thought of how could I participate in a religion that was used to unalive and enslave my ancestors, especially after reading that book, right? That's kind of, oh, oh. <laughs> like, what, what you got? <laughs> so we do have... <laughs> Elba knows what I'm going to say right now. Uh, so, so we do have Christian Taino. Mm, but for the most part. So. I mean, I, it's, hey, everybody got their journey, right? But that is really interesting. <laughs> we have a handful. It's only a handful. And of course, Elba knows because we're active parts of the community. So literally, it's one handful of Christian Taino. Wow. Um, but I, what I'm going to, what I'm going to say is that they're old. They're not young. Right. They're not learning about decolonizing. They're right. not. You know, these are older people that are very, very set in their ways Which and since being Taino is an identity and technically like I said earlier it's an identity but most of us practice our, our African spirituality espiritismo so right. you really can't I mean we don't get the idea I, I don't get right. it I don't know about anybody else I don't get it because it goes directly against the colonizing and the belief system, but I don't get, get it either. Because <laughs> our people are really interesting. Because our people, <laughs> are, we venerated our ancestors, and we we acknowledge that there were spirits of nature and you know high, like primordial beings and stuff like that. So you know, and and in Christianity, these are all false idols. Right. You know, so it's all very demonized. Right. So I, I can kind of see how with like a syncretic practice, it can make sense. But it's, it's, I don't know. The, no, the, I, I, I don't even, I, I can't even make sense of that. Yeah, that. I can, I can make more sense of the commonalities between Lukumi 
um, you know, Santeria, Ifa. Oh, yeah. I, I can see those commonalities, even though, even though don't let's, while we're on an open forum, there is no synchronicity to those two. Right. There isn't. Okay. But there are very, there's commonalities. There's a lot of things that you're like, wow, you know, that semi could be this Orisha, but it's not. You know, it's just that they have much in common. I do not see yeah. any commonalities yeah. within the Christian mm -hmm. ideology to, like at all. Not one. At all. But hey. Not one. Let me see. They said remolacha after giving my mom love him. I still cannot. I can't. That's how much I ate that growing up. That I still can't even look at it. Uh, I just thought of something, not sure if it's a Hiva thing, but when I was sick, my mom would make me inhale steam from a teapot. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Boil some herbs, throw some Vicks in there if you want to. <laughs> yep, my grandmother would lather my knees with mosquito oil and make me drink teas. Yep, teas were big in my house. Oh, or yeah. a Ricans to start decolonizing for sure. That's a good one. You know, because I think like I said, I'm not Puerto Rican. My husband is. That means my kids are. And so I see that as continuing, right, that education for my kids. So I read books like that, too. There's a, There was another one about reggaeton that I'm reading, and it has Tego on the cover. Um, I see it, Ooh. but I can't think of it. But it's something about race. Maybe it's like racism and reggaeton or something like that. Um, that sounds interesting. Yeah, that does. Yep, Taino Library has a lot. They even have the Taino semi books and I think a creation one too. Braiding sweetgrass is one of my faves to look at things in indigenous lands. That's Bartolomeo Library. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm just reading through. Um, um, you see, Bartolomeo de las Casas advocated for the indigenous peoples and yet was instrumental in the establishment of the African slave trade, double-edged sword. I know it's hard because sometimes in history, like I've read things where it says that he was preaching against right the treatment of indigenous people and then that then they were like, fine, we'll just bring the enslaved people we already had um in Spain and bring those over. And then he was like, well, not like that. Like, I felt like he, there was, there's pieces where he was um, misconstrued, but then there's other pieces where he was okay with that, but not with the indigenous people. So I, I, I don't know, but yeah, he was definitely instrumental. The different strokes for different folks. Interesting because a lot of indigenous communities who follow Christianity but still live the ancestral ways in the physical and spiritual world, doing both at the same time. Uh, it's very, it's very weird to me. It is. It's what they were taught, and they live in fear. <laughs> Someone said they is the king. Yeah, <laughs> definite. Talk about activists, though, for his community. But yeah. The Christian, I can't get over that. Like, it's literally blowing my mind right now. Because all I, I can hear, too, is my mom saying, that's the demonio, for, like, every... That's how I figured out my... Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so we have one, one here in Bia Gives. I'm not going to mention any names, but he's an elder, an artist, and a really damn good educator. But he, he will never come to our arietos because he says that we are conjuring the devil. So then how is he reconnecting? He's not, he's not even reconnecting because he's old and he's been doing this yeah. for, for eons. You know who I'm talking about, Elbo. I know um, exactly who you're talking about. I think I've exactly been doing this. He's, on he's been doing this. He's been doing this for. He's been doing it for eons, and he's a damn. Listen, being on this, I he's a damn good Taino educator. He really is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I cannot take any of that away from him. 
no matter his beliefs, no matter anything. He's a damn good Taino educator. Oh my gosh. But, but the double-edged sword, he will not play a part in any of our functions because he's like, you guys are conjuring the devil and and we're just like, what are you even talking about right now? I know what he, because there's, there's people like in any spiritual practice when you're working, especially when you're working with primordial beings, you know, that's not just for play play. And there's people who, because of their, I would say, colonial, American, what have you, entitlement. Because there's a difference, I would say, between having a birthright and being entitled to something. Like, you may have lineage, but that doesn't mean, like, all doors open for you automatically. There's still a process. There's still things, steps that need to be taken or whatever. And there's people that want to skip all those steps, have decided that, you know, they're working with Dalita Semi. And it's a whole ass trickster spirit that, you know, is feeding off them, feeding off other people that they go into community with. And it's a whole spiritual shit show, you know? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the elder that you're talking about, you know, for that, for, because of things I'm sure he has seen and heard, um, a lot of people don't want to get involved with certain aspects of spirituality at least when it comes to folks that they yeah. don't know i mean it's very simple but he right? will tell you he will tell you that no creation story he will tell you that creation story though from top to bottom and be really accurate with it but he wants no parts of it okay he wants Crazy. none zero but he'll teach it to you and he'll teach it to you really well and he'll teach you a lot of Taino customs and a lot of things that are inherently Taino. He, mm-hmm. he's, he's really good at what he does and educating. But Didn't like Elba said. At one point? What? what? Didn't he study archaeology at one point? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, we're just talking about the same person. <laughs> <laughs> I find like the church is the most closed, right? Christianity is like the most closed minded when it comes to accepting other people's religions too. Cause it's like, if I don't, if I can't understand it, then it's demonic. Whatever you, if I don't get it, it's demonic. Instead of being a little open-minded to say, Hey, let's see what's going on here first. Right. Let's see what's, what's happening. And even my mom who grew up in 21 Divisions and who grew up seeing all these things, right? She would, I would be burning a Glade candle. She'd be like, I know it's a little demon. I'm like, it's a, it's a Glade. That's my mom. <laughs> mom like, oh my. You're going to light a candle and say a prayer for everything. Generation. It's the generation. I'm like, mom, it's a Glade candle. Like, it's not even that. I'm not. Not that serious. She's like, no, because I'm the demonio. I'm like, because you don't understand what a glade candle means. Just say that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh my no, gosh, it's just it's wild the way that generation does that. So, oh my goodness, that I miss Taino Library. Someone said, oh. I think the concept of the devil, it really does come from people messing with things they aren't ready for. Yep. This is why following guidance and asking questions is so important because trickster spirits exist. Yep. And then I asked my mentor and my grandmother, I'm not trying to get caught up. And then church people, they stay gatekeeping at its finest. Church people are something. I grew up with them. They are something. They say, you know, my mom still every day, she's like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Wait, didn't the rapture already happen? According to her, we're still waiting. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I, don't know. I don't know about none of that. So, Me neither. I, I grew up, I, I always called it like, you know, what are you? I'm a Hispanic Catholic. And they're like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, they go to church on Sunday. And then every other day of the week, they're doing some kind of brujeria or some shit. (laughs) And people will be like, what? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, a Puerto Rican Catholic, a Dominican Catholic, you know? They just go to church on Sunday. But then they got candles all over the house. And, And I mean, that's how I grew up. 
I but like there was evangelism in the 80s, like a lot of people, because even La Lupe, right? La Lupe, who was such a, a beautiful, I think she practiced an ATR. Now I can't remember which. I think it was Lukumi. But she, in her age, she um, she was even preaching. Like there's videos of you on YouTube of her preaching. And I remember my mom, because um, like we're, she, my mom and dad were like the only evangelicals on my mom's side, right? And so <laughs> she, I have like seven, eight aunts, uncles. And she'd be like, we got another one. Like they were in competition. <laughs> I'm like, lady. <laughs> She's joined our team. So I remember that clearly. And I know it was like the late 80s. Oh, my gosh. But that I don't was know. Like- my, my, my mom used to take me to get readings, tarot readings at like 10. So I am I grew up completely opposite yeah. of all of that. Like, I remember <laughs> being a child and going to the Bronx to some lady's apartment because remember, back like in the 80s, it was like that. You would go to somebody's house because somebody mm-hmm. te dijo, esa ley, and she's really Ow. good. Yeah. Yeah. And you would go to somebody's house in like West Bubblefuck and, and get like, you know, a secret like reading. Mm-hmm. But again, like I said, my mom would take me to do those kinds of things. And then on Sunday, she'd be in church. So it, it it's... Same. My, my child would do her brujeria for good business and for, you know, for like better business. She was a hairdresser and all these things. And she would read her tea leaves and her coffee. And, you know, and my mom would do all of that. But she'd be like, no, it's a little bit. I want to go pick one. Pick a struggle. <laughs> You're not sure which, what it is. <laughs> and then. And someone said, are there any cults, like actual cults, we have to be aware of when looking for guidance? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not getting involved in that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Elba, where are you? I'm still here. I, yes, there's cults. I'm not, we're not going to name it because libel, slander, and people like to throw shit at people and go crazy on the internet lying on folk and stuff so we just gonna yes there are cults that's why it's important to this you is, know study this and, why we're having and this to is why we're having the yes this is why we're having this conversation right yeah. now this is why yeah we can do this, this in here why do let oh go ahead no no we, i was gonna to say let your ancestors guide you definitely that's your intuition if something don't sit right in your spirit if someone you feel like i can't put my finger on it but that dude freaks me out on that that lady there so i think she, i feel like she's lying listen yeah honor it. someone said why do you think people convert to christianity after practicing so long i i have my my two cents i'll go for yeah you can and uh, i I don't personally know anyone who went backwards. I, that's just me. Not that I can think of after the top of my head. I think of La Lupe. Um, but I think, oh, I think it is community, right? I think it's folks missing community. Um, and honestly, being afraid of doing the hard work. Right. Because at church, you sit there, you let the pastor preach. Again, I'm going from my experience. You let the pastor preach to you Ooh. based on the, their lens and what they interpreted from the Bible. Right. Because every pastor is different. Every church is different. Um, you could go to the you could both two people can be evangelical and go to, to or even Catholic and have like different um, interpretations of things because of how, you know, what their priest or their pastor believes. And so some people just want to, I just want to go back to that because it's safer and someone's just telling me what to do, right? But like me, been 10 at 11, I'm sitting here arguing with folks about where does it say that in the Bible? I don't understand what you're trying to teach me. Um, this doesn't make sense to me. And so like, you're this, you're like this cycle breaker and you're this um troublemaker because you just don't fall in line and don't ask questions that was my personal experience 
I think that going back to Christianity takes away from you having to sit and do your shadow work. Forget the devil made me do it. Yeah, yeah you can just point the finger at the evil and the Where devil's as when you're actively decolonizing and you're actively practicing in ancestral practices, you are literally forced to sit down and look at yourself. Mm-hmm. So that could, is, is my thought process of why someone would go backwards. Mm-hmm. For me, I, I think that's, that's it. It's, it's, well, I feel like there's at least two, reasons right one is spiritual laziness using spirituality as a crutch you know um or christianity in particular well let's let's throw all abrahamic right. religions they have they have their similarities right mm-hmm. um but i also feel like there's like a capitalistic aspect to it as well you know like there's whether it's social currency by means of having community and people that you can you know sell whatever it is do you want to sell to what be it friendship or you know your sensi products or whatever <laughs> but there's there's you know <laughs> there's also depending on what it is you you um do for a living like i said your sensi products there's a capitalism you know aspect in it as well mm-hmm. i feel like that the whole religion the whole point of it is to make money for the powers that be right based off of fear can we get you to be afraid enough to throw money at us for your salvation to to keep any curses or demons or whatever off of you right oh that's big here in puerto rico oh my god yeah that's Um, big that here is who you listen to because folks will walk up to you and be like oh such and such spirit told me to this that whatever and she'd be like ignorarlo (laughs) ignorarla Mm-hmm. There were some people that she would stop and listen to, and some people she'd be like, "That's that's you know, crackhead Kyle, don't listen to him." <laughs> you know? I know. My it's, bad. It's so, so tough. Right? <laughs> it's that decolonizing piece. It's so it's so tough to work through. It took me years, right, to work through that and to realize. And I was doing since I was ten, right. I'm asking questions. I'm not just. Um, taking whatever they, they give me. And even my brother was my Sunday school teacher. And we would have these arguments at home. So even when Christian people try to argue the Bible with me, I'd be like, you don't want to do that because we did Bible study at my house every day. I know the Bible. I know exactly <laughs> what it is. And I know exactly how you're going to twist it. So let's, let's just, you know, take a second there. But yeah, it's a hard one. Let's see. <laughs> Um. Yep. It is, someone said it's a lot easier to blame the devil and avoid real accountability. And also, pray, the praying things that would—that's what would get me. Is like I'm gonna pray for this, but then not work for it. Yeah. Right. And spirituality is both. Like, yeah, you're praying for it, but you're working towards that, right? And it's a is that that there's like that difference there. Um, where we're like just waiting to be saved when we're Christian. It's like I'm waiting for the Savior. I'm waiting for Jesus to come back oh. and take us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm keep praying, and the thing that I'm praying for is just gonna fall into my lap. No, yeah. okay, okay. There's manifesting <laughs> and everything, and we we that's all well and good, but you know. I don't even think this is in the Bible, but I know that a lot of Christians like to say, you know, God helps those who help themselves. You got to put, you got to do something, you know, you don't come out of nowhere. It's literally science. It is transferred. It is, it is, you know, exchanged. You have to do something to get something. Mm -hmm. It's an even exchange. Yeah. I, I'm like, that's so hard. I'm just reading the comments here. We're trying to lean on me being comfortable with being myself. Then they tell you to read Los Salmos, which is nothing but spells in the Bible. That was my favorite. Girl, that that one and Revelations was my favorite in the Bible. The Psalms? Because Jesus was a witch. Yes. <laughs> you know what? And with regard to that, I can understand, uh, you know, 
the respect and, and, you know, wanting to follow Christ and how he lived or whatever, you know, he, he, he himself was like, don't make a church in my name. All religion institutions is bullshit. <laughs> what happened when he died? People were like, oh, we're going to honor Jesus by the exact fucking opposite of what he said. By reading the Bible again, right? So that we can this one. That's one thing I noticed about African traditional religion versus the church, that the church collects money Again, from my personal say your church is different, but my my 18 years in church, all that money they collected, I never saw them giving to a, a family in need. It was like literally it'd be like, oh, let's pray for in mano so and so because they're about to be evicted. So let's just pray for them and hope that God opens a way instead of using the <laughs> church. You know what I mean? That always really got me. I used to ask these questions. See, I was a troublemaker. But like, or even doing a Food, like a cooperata with food or something in the church for their members. But like, I never witnessed any of those things. And you see that in ATR where people will feed, you know, especially Palos, people feed the community because they know this might be their only meal, right? And they'll have their fiestas and they will feed. And I'm like, how, how, (laughs) make it make sense. Like, ah. Not even, not even the community, right? But not even your church members that you're assisting with. But they, so, but they real quick with that, with the, with the but, thing that they would pass hey. around. The- <laughs> <laughs> pass that plate! Oh my god! <laughs> Someone said drives me mad. I'm like, did y'all read the same New Testament that I did? Yep, Jesus was a witch. He literally argued against religion, praying, preaching. He was 100% an activist, yep. And he went out of the way to say, if you're rich, I hate you and you're going to hell. <laughs> Pretty much. He was a wicked, he was a witch and he was a wicked one. Yeah. Like, people don't realize these things and Christians get mad when you mention it and you talk about right. it. Right. He turned water into yeah, wine. Yeah, his coffin was whipping people. Like, y'all forgot he did that shit? It wasn't all love and light, friends. He was sure. a whole witch. Sure wasn't. No. And then I, me as a devil's advocate, be like, who said this was the one book that's the end-all, be-all? When with Yeah. The, you know, yes, this in addition to, but like, I I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't want to get in trouble out here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Same questions, though. Things just contradict itself, and it's like, wait a second, but what about this? And they'd be like, shh, be quiet. Yeah. Like, you're being, you're like, okay. Like, uh, yeah. I used to ask, the one question I remember asking my brother was like, how do we know this is the right way? If you keep saying this is the only path, this is, the, this is it. you either Christian or you're going to hell. But what about the Buddhists? What about, you know, the Jewish people? What about everyone else that doesn't practice Christianity? Everybody's going to hell except the Christians. I'm like, make it make sense, though. Because if everybody believes that their way is the only, is, you know what I mean? Like, what makes you right and everyone else wrong, Was I guess, was my question to him. And he'd just be like, don't interrupt me when I'm teaching. <laughs> I'm like, fine, we'll talk about that at home then because I want an answer. To that question, I never got it. I don't but think I don't think anybody is ever going to get an answer to that question. Because it's, everybody is their way, right? And that's why when you said exactly. the, you know, Christian, I was like, hey, that's it, that's his journey then. I'm not that's that's you. Because the way I see it, God's not gonna ask me about you or about, they're gonna ask me about me. So do your thing. I'm not going to try and police you. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But it's crazy out here. Uh, <laughs> let's see. And I'm like, is there any more? Let me see. You don't get figs. <laughs> Someone said, this man said, oh, you don't get figs. Fuck you, tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And yep, you're encouraged to ask, ask questions in ATR. And Jews don't believe. That's correct. Jews don't believe in hell that way. 
Honestly, if you're not allowed to ask questions, that's a huge red flag. Run from whoever they are, whatever religion, whatever practice. I don't give a fuck. Agreed. That is an alarm bell. Don't, that's don't when you me. know you're in a cult. That, when you yeah. cannot ask questions. Was the question someone asked? So, yep. Mm-hmm. I actually that- have a video on my TikTok of it's it's spiritual abuse, but I go into like red flags of of okay, this is the way that people that are leaders of cults and those around them behave and interact, like things to look for and asking questions is definitely on that list when they don't like it or you contradict what everybody, you know, specifically the, the main person saying Mm -hmm. that's a cult run. Right. And then even, you know, for your own learning and benefit, ask the questions. There's no dumb questions. That's how we all learn. Right. It's by asking. So you shouldn't be afraid to ask those questions. Let me see. Uh, um, someone said, how do you feel about good spousing context? Some people think they can marry God's spirits. Oh, God spousing. Sorry. Is it valid or invalid? I thought it was a bit concerning, but I don't know. Within the Taino community or just in general? Oh, I'm, I'm not sure what we're even talking about, to be honest. <laughs> it's like what? God spousing. Where they can marry gods or spirits. Is that valid or invalid? Shoot. I'm going to say, do you? I don't understand the question in what context. A holy union with a divine entity? Is that what we're talking about? That's what it sounds like to me. I mean, any possible, but I would say unlikely. I don't know. I don't. I don't know that there's anything like that. At least in the Taino. Uh, about a give and take, right? Like what? What would be that? What would be the point? I guess asking the question in that way. Um, if this existed, what would be the point? Like I'm not seeing how the divinity would gain from a marriage. But that's just me. Oh, what's the name of that one celebrity that said that she, you know, did the day the ghost? That she what? That, that that's the that's the vibes it's giving me. There was there's that there was a celebrity now when I'm uh Nicole something I want to say I'm gonna see that that. Something with a ghost that married a ghost. No activities oh. with a ghost. Oh, oh. Activities. Oh. Sucky, the succubus. Something. The I don't succubus. know what she was talking about. I was succubus. like, girl. <laughs> succubus. Um, I'm like, I got the. Oh my god! What do they call <laughs> it in Spanish well, community? Um, es como si un un muerto se te Oh man, there's a name for it in our Hispanic ATR community. Cuando se te monta un muerto, um, it's not a pesadilla because it's when you're sleeping. Uh, Mounted, kind of, but not. I have it at the tip of my tongue and it don't want to come out. And when I say it. Everybody here is going to be like, oh, but it's like a sucky bitch. I'm right now. <laughs> uh, it's when you're sleepy. Se te monta muerto encima. Um, there's a na- there's a oh, word for it. Like by the hag. There's a there's a there's a word in our community for that. Um, you know what? Look, we'll keep going. It's gonna come out when it comes out. Watch. <laughs> I'm telling uh, you. I'm mad now because I know what you're talking about, but I don't know. When they, to cuando un muerto se te, se, te, se te monta encima when you're sleeping, that you can't get up. You ever had those experiences? Like uh, when you're sleeping and you per- can't get up? There's a, mm-hmm. a word for it. We have a word for it in our ATR community for that. Y se me olvidó. Like, I can't even think. Yo no me recuerdo tampoco, pero yo sé que mi mamá me lo ha dicho. 
I just know in English they say it's being written by the hag. Yes, but we have a special name for it in our Hispanic community, in our ATR community. Um, oh man, it it'll come out when it's gonna when. I'm telling you, you guys know what it is. She gonna come in Spanish in her, in her post in her story, like boom, this is what it was. this is what it was. Yeah, to me, it's like oh, it's right there. Uh, someone says sleep paralysis, sleep paralysis, and then it is a succubus. It is succubus in green, Greek and Roman mythology. Yes, and yes, sleep paralysis. But in Spanish, we have another name for it. But yes, sleep paralysis is is a very popular term for that. Mm -hmm. Cuando se te monto muerto encima. Oh, I know. I'm about to text my mom because I know she. <laughs> One I'm of telling you, man. Is off now i'm not even gonna lie tag me in your post when you post it because i want to know too now no i can't i can't even when i see the word i'm gonna be like that's what it was yeah we have a word for it in spanish and i just it won't come out like we've all heard it mm -hmm. in the spiritual community and it's, it just won't come out but it's a sleep paralysis that's exactly what it is what is an atr it's an african traditional religion so, Lukumi, Ifa, Santeria. Palo. Palo is considered, yes. Uh, I don't know if if, if Haitian, Vudum. I mean, it, yeah, it's considered ATR. Um, all of it. Like, like, all of it. There's so, so many out there. Obia, right, from our... Caribbean cousins. Not many people know about that practice. They used to practice that in Aruba too. Mm -hmm. Is it Jamaica? Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, Ar Aruba. Um, What's the other one? Uh, I thought they were three. Uh, uh, Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Aruba. Oh, yeah. okay. Ooh, I, wanna I know. I'm What's up? <laughs> There's Barbados. Three. Is it Barbados? It's Barbados. Bajan people, I thought, too. There's a couple of different Caribbean islands that practice that. Mm hmm I know. But a lot of this stuff's from TikTok. Don't. Don't go into TikTok too much. Oh, TikTok, TikTok is will... is a whole mass. You really it, yeah. your intuition there and your discernment because <laughs> someone said not the Kokomo song. <laughs> uh, Ruba, you know that's how you get all the. <laughs> oh, I remember some of the Caribbean country. Okay, I not the Kokomo song. <laughs> Listen, it's late, okay? We gotta, we gotta figure it out how we're figuring it out. Yep, Cuba too. Has Cuba, uh, Lukumi, Santerias from Cuba. Is that the yeah. think religion from Cuba? Lukumi, yeah. Oh my goodness. I know, ladies, what do you think? Do you want to, is there anything else that you might want to say before we end the live or because we've been on for like an hour and a half. I, I would like to respect your time wow. too. But oh, this, that was the longest, that was the shortest hour and a half that I've ever that, experienced. It went really quick. I did not even realize did. that. It did. Say otra pregunta or anything like that. It's going to say something about that spirituality that you'd want to you know some advice that you'd want us to leave us with in reference to Taino what I would say is follow where you're being led mm. because there's a lot of us that are actively in community now it's because we were led in this direction um, do not let negativity, do not let 
um, not knowing what to do persuade you. Lean into your ancestral ways and ask them to open the doors for you to be able to to connect with who it is that you are needing to connect with. And I'm saying that from a place of experience Mm -hmm. because I know know that it's, it's, it's a clusterfuck of confusion when Mm -hmm. you feel a certain way and you know, but you don't know how to begin and how to start. And I literally asked to lead me in the direction that I need to be led in because I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's exactly, and I'm still going through it because, you know, we need to always be teachable. So I'm still going through it, but everything that I ask for, especially connecting with my Taino ancestral side has literally just opened itself up. You know what I'm saying? I found my community that way, my education that way. And yeah, don't, don't give up. Just follow, follow where you're being led to. And take your time. Right. That part. That's what I was going to add. That too. Yeah. That too. Patient. That's big. That, yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people don't like to hear that part, but Oh, you got because we live have in a, a lot of patience. very fast-paced society. So people are used to instant gratification, and you know, you it, it's it's just not going to be that way. You set up a space in your home for your ancestors. You talk to them every day, and then you wait. Right, and you know, student is things. It's so um, Sorry, no, that's okay. I was just saying, like, it takes time for things to unravel, and you got to allow that space for that to naturally happen yes and then of course you can ask either alba questions or ask me questions our yukayekes are both open um you know i i think i'm not not sure but i think my yukayekes facebook group is in my bio somewhere i have to i but if not you can just ask and you know, the same thing with elbow and just Mm -hmm. allow yourself to be guided, not saying that you guys have to, or will join our Yukayekes because we have other Yukayekes as well, but we are always open to educate. That's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. This is what we actually do within our community. So Oh my God, Elba, did you want to add anything? Mm, I mean, I guess to, to Nikini's point, you know, you just, you got to start somewhere. You know, it doesn't, not to say it doesn't matter who, you know, but like, if you come into community and the people you're not meant to be in community with are, are who you first meet, that doesn't mean that they're not going to introduce you in some way, shape, or form to who you do, who you do vibe with and stuff like that. So it's, it's like anything, you know, if you want something bad enough, you put in the effort, you know, follow your ancestors, talk to them every day and use discernment. And that intuition is, is a lot of the times your ancestors trying to guide you away from or towards something. So that's pretty much So it. really quick. <laughs> When I came into the community, I was supposed to be a part of a different Yukayeke. And it was, it was weird because I communicated and it just wasn't panning out and wasn't panning out and wasn't panning out. And to say what Elbow was saying, it just wasn't working. And I almost gave up. I almost just what was like, you know what? I'm going to just leave this alone. Um, and then the community came to me when I moved to the island without even having any, not, you know, like knowledge or anything. So patience, like Elba said, is going to be very important. 
because sometimes who you start with is not who you end up with, you know? Um, let your tri tribe find you. Easy as that. Uh, uh, so beautifully said, ladies. Thank you so much um, for, for joining me and for taking the time. Um, definitely saving this so that you guys can go back and watch. Um, that also, if you're not already following, follow Taino Library, Miki Inaru. Am I saying that right? I know there's two eyes in the middle there, so make sure you get those. Yeah. yeah. But I'll I'll tag them too when I post the video when it uploads, so so that you guys can easily go over there. All right. But thank you so much. You ladies have a great night. I'd love to this again sometime. We do. We do need to to. Start a getting part two. more proactive. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Well, you guys have a great night. Bye. Bye, Elba. Bye. Bye. Bye.